first day today is day 24 excited to be here i hope your week is coming along well so far i hope that you are having a great good day for those that have the early start welcome to your ask me anything series today we are going to focus on good versus bad acts when it comes to getting support and donation um, from people to support your work before i jump into today's conversation my name is Omotola the Great. I am the lead consultant here at the Funding Magnet, and our mission is to be able to aid and support at least a thousand nonprofits to fully fund their mission. We believe that you don't have to go broke to make a living, and you can make a difference while making a living as well. And you don't have to go broke to make a difference. And we're here to support you with tools, with templates, with tips to ensure that you can fully fund your mission and create much much good in the world we have different kind of programmings that can support you we have a digital learning academy where you can um learn a lot about different topics whether it's about starting your non-profit growing your non-profit funding your non-party non-profit or even getting team members um to support the work that you do so don't be a stranger we're just a DM away, send a message, leave a comment. And so this series has been born out of questions that have been asked over a couple of weeks. And so if you have a specific question that I've not covered so far, please send the DM, leave it in the comment, and we're definitely going to address it as well. Okay, so let's get started. Today's topic is going to focus on good versus bad acts when it comes to raising support for your organization. So the question is, what is a good ax? What are the components that a good acts have? And so when it comes to getting support, getting donation for, from people and organizations to support your work, there is a way that you can go about it. And so you've had me say it before, but I'll say it again, because with repetition comes <laughs> um, the opportunity to retain it and actually implement it. And so before you make any hacks, I will encourage you to use the CIA formula and so the CIA formula basically states that C in the CIA formula is all about capacity. Wherever you want to hack, do they have the capacity to give the amount that you're requesting for? Do they have um, the, the amount that you want? So you can hack somebody to give you 100,000 when all they can afford is 10,000. When you make that ask, it's going to be a bad ask because they will say no. They won't tell you that, oh, sorry, I can only afford 10,000. Most people just say no, that sorry, I can't, I don't have 100,000 to give to you. And so it's very important to, if you want to make your ask a good one to ensure to review, does this person have the capacity to give me what I'm looking for? So your next question might be, how do I know if they do? You can start getting to know the person, like make it a cut sheet, figure out what do they post? What do they share about? Where do they work? What's their profession? So let's say, for instance, and this is no, this is not trying to dish anyone. Let's say it's a teacher that you're trying to request for money from, right? And you can look at it to say, okay, in this city, in this state, in this country, on average, how much does teacher earn? So that can help you to say, okay, I cannot ask a teacher for 100,000 donation because maybe because of the economy and the city or state and the, whether it's private or public that they work for, they may not be able to give 100,000, but maybe they can give 5,000, maybe they can give 10,000, maybe they can give 1,000. And so it's very important that you take the time to really understand who you are talking to before you make the ask. Don't just do a blanketed ask and say, oh, give us 100,000, give us 50,000, without getting to know some background information about the particular person you're asking for. And so what is the capacity for them to give? The nice thing in the CIA formula is the high. It's not enough for them to have the capacity to give you what you're asking for. The high stand for interest. Are they interested in your cause? Are they interested in your mission or your vision? Are they interested in the population that you're serving? Are they interest, interested in the issue or the community that you're serving? And so, yes, they may have the capacity to give you the money that you're requesting for. But if they are not interested, the chance of them giving is very slim. And so it's not enough for them to, for you to know whether they have the capacity to give. The next step for you to do is to find out what are they interested in? What are they passionate about? What is something that makes them come alive? And your next question will be, how do I know? 
that is why we have social media right most people have at least a profile online and so you can check out to see what are they posting about what are they sharing about what is something that they talk a lot about in the past one month in the past two months from their post so this will help you to reduce a lot of work in terms of just asking anybody and getting no because i see and i hear a lot of people saying well we requested for help and then they didn't give us anything then i asked them that did you even find out if this person care have they ever volunteered for any organization that is similar to yours or have they ever spoken about anything whether in person whether online whether at an event saying that they care about this cause or they have at least an interest in it so it's not enough exactly yes thank you it offer yes it's what makes them come alive what is something that they are passionate about that they cannot not talk about it that they will drop whatever they are doing to want to support the work that that you are doing as well and so for me education is a big big thing for me and so i will always give to things that are educational because i'll always give um to things that enhance the opportunity for people and so you need to figure out what is it that makes this person tick what makes them come alive? What are they passionate about? What is something that resonates with them that they're like, you know what? Whether through their past experience or experience of their loved ones, they are for this thing. And then the last thing in the CIA formula is the access. It's not enough for them to have the capacity to give. It's not enough for them to be interested in you. But how accessible are they to you? So think about it. I know a lot of people used to say, oh, if only Opera knows about my nonprofits, then we're going to be fully funded for life. Yes. Opera may have the capacity to give you a lot of money. Yes, Opera may be interested in girl education, might be interested in women and youth, might be interested in ensuring that people have access to what they need or creativity things. But how accessible is Opera to you? Can you email her? Can you get on the phone with her? Can you have a conversation vice email with her? If those things are not really possible, then she might not be the best bet person for you to ask and to engage to say, oh, give us money right now because your access is important. And so a lot of you, you forget about people around you in your vicinity and then you try to jump the step and go to people that it's going to take years or months for you to, to, to get them to give to your organization because the, like, the, the strength between you and them is very, very long. Or the, the gap between who can help you to get to them is quite long and far apart. And so I would like to encourage you that it's not just enough for them to have the capacity or the interest, but how accessible can you reach out to this person in person and go to their office or go to their house and talk about the work that you're doing? <clears throat> or can you call them? Are they on your WhatsApp, on your Telegram? Can you message them there? Can you send an email and they will receive it and they will read it and then they might want to give as well. And so once you have these three things in place, then your hacks is going to be good. But if every single minute you have the capacity, you the person is interested but you don't have access, then it's going to take longer and it's be more frustrating for you. And so before you make any acts at all, always remember the CIA formula. Do they have the capacity to give the amount I'm requesting for? Are they interested in what we are doing or the population we are serving? And then how accessible am I to them? What's the degree of separation between myself and this person or this entity that we want to request for funding from? So once you have all of these three things in place, then your acts is easier and then you're able to ensure that your acts is good. And so I'm going to now dive into the difference between a good axe and a bad axe. And so when you're thinking of asking for donation, the first thing is to make it short and to the point. A lot of you, you go on a long, long story and then you drag things out and at the end of the day, the people lose the interest when you are making the appeal, when you are doing the case for support. How can you keep it simple? Like think of it like KISS, K-I-S-S, -I -I keep it simple, keep it simple. Like, keep it really, really simple. Like, try as much as possible to be short. Think about it like an, I, I did a, um, um, a podcast about your elevator pitch. You can go back to definitely watch it later. And so, make it simple. Like, tell us who you are for, what you're fighting for, and tell us the challenge that is going on, and then tell us your solution, and tell us a story about the person that you're trying to make help as well. The, um, a bad act is when you make it too long, and it has too many unnecessary um, 
rambles and details so we don't want you to read your website to us we can always read by ourselves we can go to your website and spend some time there we don't want to, you to read your website to us what we want you to do is to take the time and appeal to our emotion tell us a story tell us about the change you're making tell us about the before and the after and you can keep it on the two three minutes it's better not that you go on for five and you know people are busy they have so many things that they are doing and so it's very important that you respect their time and their energy the second thing is to make it easy to understand a lot of you complicate things stop using jargons that people don't understand that they have to go and google it or go to the dictionary for how can you make it simple if you're trying to explain to a five-year-old i have a five-year-old and she asks a lot of questions and she wants to know why and why and why and so can you explain what you do and why you do and who you do it for and the solution that you're bringing forth to a five-year-old what would that take for you to explain it to you? So your ask has to be easy to understand. They should be able to know A leads to B to C or A plus B equals C. Like it should be that simple. It should not be, oh, two times two divided by five plus 10 squared two or something. That makes it complicated. And so a bad ask on the other side is very confusing and it has multiple acts. And so that brings me to the next one. The next one is to, Keep it focused at one person. Don't try to sell them to help a thousand people. Keep it about one person. Make it about one person. It's easier for them to see that because it's harder for them to see. Let's say, yes, the issue that you're trying to um, face is like, oh, 10,000 million children are out of school. Yes, it's good. For grant writing, it's wonderful for you to have that statistics. But for an individual to have an, a conversation with an individual, to make the action, it's a lot. They feel like, oh my goodness, 10 million children like i don't have that kind of money to help 10 million children but most people have the money to support one they have the money to support one or two and so make it about one person don't try to sell them on thousands of people in that moment at that time make it about one person like will you help us jumpstart the greatness in shola in shade in sarah in john in taller Will you help us to just that? This is what it will look like. It takes 5,000 in a month or for a week to be able to provide one, two, three. Simple as that. It's easy to understand. It's easy to follow. Instead of telling them, oh, there are over 1 million people and our goal is to... But no, like you don't, you may not have the resources for 1 million right now. But can you get at least one person to support and reduce the number by one? And so make it about one person, not so much about everybody. If you're writing a grant or corporate proposal, yes, you can talk, talk about all of these statistics. But right now and right then with this individual, make it about one person. Let them feel like the hero. That yes, they're saving the life of this person. They're transforming their life. They're changing their life for good. By them donating to your organization and giving to your organization. Also, focus on those that you serve and their need. So don't make it about your organization need and all your overhead. Yes, because if you do it well, the way that I teach my client, when you have your call number, your call number will have your administration fees, your utility fees, everything. So it's not just about your program and the beneficiary alone. When you make your hacks, whatever your call number is, it will have a combination of both your overhead costs and your program costs joined together. But most people, what I see is that they don't take the time to actually understand what exactly goes into our program not just what we do to the beneficiary but what other resources we need as an organization to make it happen and so if you don't put that into your budget to calculate your call number then you might be in trouble but honestly when you are able to have that then it's easier to make them and to do that and so the bad acts only focus on your non-profit needs you focus on oh we need a building oh we need this utility field oh we need bus no how does that relate to the work that you do how does that relate to the population that you're serving how does that relate to the community that you're serving so even if you're going to talk about your non-profit need you have to make it tangible to relate to the people that you're serving because if not they're like why should i invest in you to get a bus if you don't tell them the why if you don't tell them what it does if you don't tell them the impact of that having a bus does for the people that you serve then the likelihood of them giving is going to be very reduced then another thing that you should include in your acts is a lot of emotion like you need to move people you need to move people and it's also for you to tell them a sad story and that is not true 
like there is there's a different there are different ways that you can do that so let i'll tell you an example for my and my own history so one of the reasons why i care about education so much is because of the things that i went through when i was in secondary school i had to repeat ss1 which is like the first freshman year in high school and not because i was not brilliant enough or smart enough but because of certain things that was happening in the education system and so i, I knew what that felt like having to repeat having to stay behind and all the things i had to face and the self-esteem issue and all the things that came along with that and so because of that i made up my mind that i don't want this to ever happen to any child if i can help it and so that was one of the reasons why i started my own non-profit to say you know what i believe that anyone irrespective of your background that they have the potential they have the possibility to be wherever they want to be and so it's and for me my goal is to break the barriers that stops that cripples them from really fulfilling their potential and ignites the possibility within them and it's because thankfully i had great parents who still believed in me despite what the label said despite what my report card said and through their mentorship through their support i was able to recover and now i'm somebody that has a phd that has two master's degree and so many other things to my name but when you look at me at that age when i was 13 14 what you, what most people saw was like oh you're a repeater oh you're a dollar oh you're this and i was labeled those things and i believed it for a few 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 months as well but because of really great people and mentors i was able to change that opinion of myself i was able to see myself beyond the current failure that i had and really move forward to make something out of my life and so because of that I am passionate about education. I believe that every child, if they have the right tools, if they have the right support system, they can thrive. They can be whatever they want to be. And their background or lack of does not equal their future. And so you can make those kind of appeal to say, you know what, this is why I care. This is why, this is what is at stake. This is why we need to do this. This is why we need to undo this problem now for this particular child in this particular community right now. And so it's very important if you can make it emotional, if you can make it relatable for them to see that you know what like everybody has gone through one kind of shame or failure in their life right and so it's easier for people to connect on that level as well and then a bad act is when you don't have a lot of emotion you just tell them statistics and facts but you don't help them to connect to it with why it matters now you don't connect it to the emotion you don't connect it to the issues that those particular participants or people are facing and if you cannot connect it and it's just all about statistics and number then it's harder for people to be invested or want to help you in being able to change life transform community or save lives for good as well and then also um for your acts to be a good one the donation amount must mean something so make it mean something. And so let them say that, you know what, when you support us with this amount of money, this is exactly what it does. This is how it changes the life. Don't just say, oh, it changes the life. No, how does it change the life? How does it transform their life? And so you need to let us know, okay, with $5,000 or 5,000 naira or 5,000, whatever your currency is, this is what it's going to do. In, for one week or for one month, it's going to provide mentorship. It's going to provide tutoring. It's going to provide food for this child for a week when i had when we were doing our own program used to have a feeding program because we realized that a lot of our students when they come to our center they're always looking around looking for food we're like what is going on and come to find out most of them have not had dinner the night before or they didn't have breakfast and they had to walk to school on empty stomach and stay in school for eight hours to learn and now they're just so hungry that they can't focus on what we're trying to do and so we realized okay we need to include a budget for feeding every single day that they are with us into her program and so we were not planning for that so we had to look for what are we going to do and so we identified people in the community we look for organizations who can donate in kind in terms of like um food stuff and then we also got um cash as well to say you know what help us like we we went to like an indomie factory and so they were giving us like um packs and packs of indomie every single month to support the work that we were doing because we we're able to t translate to them to say you know what this is what is at stake yes these students they want an education they want to learn but because they are so hungry they cannot focus they are wondering about are they going to have food when they go back home and so because of that they're so distracted and their attention span is we're not able to keep it we're not able to focus it but if you help us if you support us with this amount of money to buy this food stuff or if you give us some of this product that you have or this produce this is how it's going to help 
increase their level of attention and automatically lead to increase in their grade and we did a before and after where we were able to say okay before um we started doing the feeding program what was their result most of them were at c's or d's or health within three months of instituting the um daily lunch and things like that like things jumped their interest their focus their excitement about learning it changed for good and so I, mean, I know that it is definitely possible so we're so for future hacks we're able to show the before and after that this get person before we started this program she was it was a c or d student but because we implemented this they jumped there was a, 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 a i like level of jumping that came with the learning curve and because of that now they are a b plus student or a b student or an a student and we can trace it back to of course it's not the only thing that we did but it was one of the things that made the big difference to see that jump in their grade and their attention and their focus and their passion for their education and so if you can make this kind of art uh, and make it mean something to your um potential donor it's definitely going to um make a difference and definitely um help you to um do more good as you go forward um, and as you continue to do the work that you do and so make it simple just to recap make it mean something um attach emotion to it make it about one person not a thousand not a million if you're doing a grant yes make it about the millions or thousand but for one-on-one -on -one acts for an individual like make it about one person and i hope that this helps you if you have a specific question relating to your own organization or feel free to um definitely leave it in the comments as well but i hope that this you can use this tip and hopefully this will help you to increase the conversion rate when you ask people for donation and remember the cia formula before you make any acts are they cap do they have the capacity to give what you're asking for are they interested in your mission your vision or the population or community that you're serving and how accessible are they to you can you reach them by one-on-one -on -one conversation can you reach them on social media can you reach them by phone call that you can you reach them by text message can you reach them by going in person to where they are um to talk to them about what you do so i hope that this was helpful again i'll be back tomorrow um and to focus on that topic um i hope that you keep doing good and if you have a specific question know that we're just a dm away feel free to leave us a comment um on or send us a dm as well also i have a free master class that is coming up april 5th at 12 30 p.m central time which will be 6 30 west african time it's free it's one hour and it's about creating a fully funded plan it's not too late like i know q1 is about to be over by the end of march Three months is already gone in 2022. So if you're not where you want to be in terms of the, of the funding for your organization, if you're not where you want to be in terms of your impact or the program that you want to carry out and you're still not sure, come hang out with us on April 5. I am going to show you and break it down, the five components you need to be able to fully fund your organization. And I promise you, it's going to be all that you need to be able to create a strategic plan so that by 2022 December, you have more than you need like you're going to fully fund your budget i really believe that, that you don't have to always do self-funding or un be underfunded the world need you more than ever think of everything that is going on in the world so you, you the work you do is important the work you do is life-saving and so come and learn the tips and the tools to be able to do it and do it well and reach out to so many other people so go to the link in the bio click on it and i cannot wait to see you um doing the master class until then keep doing good and have a good day bye everyone